Hello and welcome to Nothing But The Truth. 24 hours after yesterday's results and a night of reflection, how does the Congress party view the situation it faces? That's the key issue I shall discuss today with the outgoing Parliamentary Affairs Minister, a nine-time Lok Sabha winner and now the senior most MP in the House, Kamal Nath. Mr. Kamal Nath, you must be hugely relieved to have won Chindwara, but the truth is you're one out of just three cabinet ministers, and I'm talking of 28 altogether, who've actually survived. All the others have been wiped out. So today, do you feel a bit like the last man standing? Well, of course, there is a feeling of uh, there's, a, there's a low. And uh, I've seen times when Mrs. Gandhi uh, lost her own election in 77. I was a member of the Youth Congress at that time. I saw Sanjay Gandhi losing. I saw Rajiv Gandhi losing from 415 coming down to the 190s. Uh, but this time, the low and the profound uh, loss which we've had. The loss is nothing but profound. The profound loss we've had uh, obviously makes one really reflect on uh, what we did and what we did not do. I'll come to that in a moment's time because that's a critical part of our discussion. But first I want to just <coughs> discuss with you the scale of what's happened. You're reduced to just 44 seats. In 10 states, you didn't win a seat at all. Nowhere in the country you've gone into double digits and there's a real possibility that if the speaker doesn't want to, you won't get the official designation of opposition. Has Mr. Modi fulfilled his claim of Congress Mukt Bharat? I don't think so. This was a slogan given by uh, then in 1977 we lost and uh, this was a slogan I've heard many times before. But in 77 you had 145 plus seats. This time you're a hundred and more less. It, we must remember that at that time there were there were sayings that you can never Congress is finished Congress is doomed. I've heard all this before. The Congress is neither doomed neither finished. The Congress will be live and kicking uh, as soon as we are able to recover from this and are able to get our act together again. But you know when you say as soon as we're able to recover, it's an incredible act of recovery that's needed because just look at the scale again. You've lost six out of six in Bombay, seven out of seven in Delhi, all 25 in Rajasthan, all 26 in Gujarat, 46 out of 48 in Maharashtra, 78 out of 80 in UP. There are parts of India where Congress virtually doesn't exist. In 1977, we had no seats except one in North India. The only seats we had were from South India. There was nothing in Maharashtra, nothing in... Uh, um, in Rajasthan, nothing in UP, all that was always there. I've seen it all. So I have the confidence and I am very confident that a government which has come in, a party which has come in, uh, on the basis of all these promises, on the basis of all these, uh, these accusations, uh, has built up hopes which the people will see through in a short while. Well, that's another matter. Let's leave that aside. We don't know the answer to that. But the joke about Congress today is that you don't even have enough MPs to create a cabinet. You've got 44. Dr. Manmohan Singh's government was 79. The other joke is that in UP alone, Narendra Modi has 150% more MPs than you have nationwide. Those are the jokes on Twitter. That's the extent to which Congress has that, crashed. But that's true. These are, these are numbers. That's true. I, mean, I, I said this in the beginning, that our numbers are very, very poor. Now, once that be so, repeating them in one form or the other doesn't get us anywhere. Would you accept that you've suffered a debacle? Of course we've suffered a debacle. A terrible debacle. The worst possible? It could not be worse than this. Had you at all expected it would be so bad? No. I thought it would be, it, we would not be doing well, but I never thought we'd do this badly. Nowhere near this badly. Where did you think you would come in? I thought we would be slightly above 100. So actually, you're more than 50% below Absolutely. what you thought. Absolutely. I'm <clears throat> I, I was wrong in my calculations, especially about the, so, uh, about the South and about the West. Uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, uh, Karnatak, uh, you know, uh, was the Andhra Pradesh. In all these areas, you expected to do better? We ex I expected to do better. Maybe by five seats or ten seats, I expected to do much better. What do you think went wrong? Why has Congress suffered this debacle? Well, I think, you know, the Congress politics has changed, but the Congress hasn't. And 
the Congress has to now change along with the politics which has changed. Every five years, every decade, the voters change. The aspirational, the, aspiration, uh, the aspirations of the voters change. We must recognize today that today in India, we have the largest aspirational society on this planet. And unless you are connecting with them, unless you are, they look at you with hope, they can look at you with faith and trust, uh, you can bring in any kind of legislation. You can do any good thing. We did a huge amount of good things. You know, you're saying something very interesting. You're saying India changed and India changed sizably and dramatically. Congress didn't change. Congress, therefore, was years behind India. Yeah, absolutely. I'm saying that. Was Mrs. Gandhi aware? Was Rahul Gandhi aware of this? Well, they were aware. I think by the time we got aware, uh, it became too late. Because with an aspirational voter, with a voter with growing disposable incomes in rural India, the aspirations of the rural youth are different. Their, their perceptions of politicians and politics and political parties are And different. you were totally out of sync with the youth of India and with their aspirations. Uh, that, that is apparently so because look at the drubbing we've got. You know, you laid a lot of store behind strategies and policies like right to food, Lokpal, the land acquisition bill, the right to education. Congress really genuinely believed that this would get you 200 seats. You ended up by 44. Was your thinking in terms of what the people wanted wrong? Was your strategy and your policies wrong? This was a minimum requirement what the people wanted. Now, by meeting the minimum requirements of people, you don't get votes. Then, with all these bills, we brought in the right to information. People said, this we should have in any case. What is the big deal? We brought in land acquisition. People said, what's the big deal? But there was the switch, flip side to it. Those who weren't benefited by the, by the land acquisition, said you didn't you brought the wrong legislation let's take the rural employment guarantee scheme we had the farmer got against this because he said that agricultural labor is now costing so much more and there were big banners in some places that jab tak manrega rahega tab tak kisan marega so while you were benefiting one lot you were benefiting the weaker sections the, the other sections were all going against you. You're saying a very interesting thing. You're saying you got caught in a sort of cleft stick. Some of the things you did which you were proud of, people said this should have happened anyway. Yeah. We're not going to give you any benefit for this. Yeah, absolutely. This should have happened. Yeah. And others who didn't like it punished you for doing it. Absolutely. So you neither got any benefit, worse still, you got punishment. And also, all these schemes, the state governments of different parties propagated as their own. There was a communication failure. So where there was credit, they took the credit. Where there was credit, they took the credit. Like our pension schemes, our, our Anganwari scheme, our Asha scheme, our uh, Manriga scheme, our road schemes. So here, if others took the credit for what you've done, are you also saying you failed to communicate? Absolutely. I must say this, that we have not. India, in the last 10 years, India saw the largest social programs in the history of mankind. But Congress still got defeated. Absolutely. 244 seats. And therefore, you failed to communicate? Absolutely. And worse still, people felt that these programs should have been happening anyway. They weren't going to give you benefit for them. And others punished you. What about Telangana? You genuinely believed after August last year that Telangana was going to win you seats. You hoped that you would get the majority of the 17 seats in that new state. You've ended up with two, the same as BJP and TDP, who weren't considered to be even proponents on Telangana. Telangana backfired, didn't it? Telangana backfired. Absolutely. There, there's, I, I have no hesitation in saying so, because the people in Telangana never thought you gave them Telangana, where the people in Simandra thought you had bifurcated the states. And I believe this, that if you have to separate a state, if you have to separate a state, you cannot do it combatively. You have to do it with consent and consensus. So the whole emphasis on Telangana was a waste of time? No, I think it was the longest demand of any state in the history but of our country. But it yielded no product and benefit. It, it got us no politics. It, 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 it in it, fact cost you. It, it's cost us, absolutely. A you, state paid a pen, you paid a price for uh, Telangana. United Andhra Pradesh gave us 33 seats last time. And now you've ended up with probably five or six. Uh, we were, uh, landed up with two. Let me put something else to you. You went into the elections with people viewing your government as weak and believing that it was paralyzed by indecision. Whatever the truth may be, and that's another story, but that image of weakness, of indecision, of indecisiveness, would you accept that also cost you? Well, the, our government should have spoken out much more, undoubtedly, because uh, every ministry, every minister must have, should have spoken out, including me. I'm not uh, disassociating myself from it. Much more on programs, 
because what we were doing, what we were delivering, what was being implemented was never known. Was not known the way it should have been known. So, if speaking out was a something that cost you, then was the Prime Minister's silence particularly expensive? I think the Prime Minister should have come out more and talked of 2G, why the decision was taken not to auction it. Only because we were transferring what should have come to the government in an auction to the people of this country, so they could have cheap phones. It's the process which went wrong. In fact, on 2G, it wasn't just the process went wrong, it wasn't just his silence. The Prime Minister came up with an explanation which was the compulsion of the coalition and people felt this simply shows him up as weak. It shows up the government as complicit in corruption. Would you accept that even some of those explanations were the wrong well, ones? Well, some of the explanations really did not connect with the people, did not go down well with the people. There's no harm saying that because it is, is, that is now what is flowed out of. These results have flowed out of. Uh, what has happened? In fact, you ended up looking either like a government that was corrupt or a government that was unable or was unwilling to tackle corruption. Once again, that image cost you. You see, people did not even understand and we couldn't make people understand what presumptive loss was. There was no loss. Now, when we go into the concept of preven preventive loss, you can, it, it has no limits. But you know, the problem is not, not only did people not understand presumptive loss, you made no real effort to explain it either. I, I agree with you. And so the net we result We failed was, in communication. But we it was failed worse. to connect. But here when you failed to communicate, you left the clear impression, in some minds you left proof that you were corrupt. That could have been a conclusion. It, it, could, it could be a natural conclusion, but not necessarily the conclusion. What about the relationship between the Prime Minister and Mrs. Gandhi? Many people felt that, in fact, Mrs. Gandhi had real power, but without any uh, authority. The Prime Minister had position without any power. The net result is people felt this was an unhappy relationship which weakened and emasculated it's, the Prime Minister. It's absolutely wrong. I worked in government and I worked uh, in high levels of government. And I must tell you, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi had no, no interference. She never exercised any authority or power in the functioning of government. But as a member, as the president of the Congress party, as the chairman of the UPA, she was concerned about programs. But this impression... Which the government would have to undertake. But the impression was never countered by your government and people concluded the power lay with Sonia Gandhi behind closed doors in Tanjanpath and she's not accountable. Well, the, the Prime Minister in Seven Race Course Road only has position but he's weak and you did nothing to counter that impression. Well, I think uh, that could be correct because this is being talked about today but I must say it... As you accept that? You accept that? I accept that and but I must say it as emphatically as I can that this was all simple rubbish. One other thing. So far, we've talked about how your policies, your strategies backfire, Telangana in particular, how some of your right-based legislation never got you the benefit you hoped for. We've talked about the image of the government and how that was counterproductive, whether it was the weakness or the corruption, or whether it was simply the belief that Sonia is powerful and the Prime Minister is not. I want to now explore with you briefly whether your party also has a share of responsibility in this debacle that you faced. As I look at your party, I say to myself, does it really have the structure of a party that can win popular elections? After all, five of your 12 general secretaries have never won a Lok Sabha election. Of your 22 CWC members, only six come from the Lok Sabha. The rest come either from the Rajya Sabha, which is not directly elected, or they don't belong to any house at all. And the CWC and your general secretaries are supposed to be your connect between the party and the people. And I suggest to you that these people themselves don't have a connection with the people. How can they connect the party? Well, factually, those numbers may be correct. But then there is all levels of experience which are needed. And these all levels of experience do come into play at some point or the other. But did this level of experience get prominence where in fact you should have given prominence to people's capacity to campaign and people's capacity to connect with the people. That got buried somewhere. Well, that will be one of the points to reflect on when we reflect on the drubbing we've got. You therefore do agree that the Congress party needs to look deeply into the sort of people who become general secretaries and who become members of the CWC. Well, I think Congress party must look at the structural aspects of its own structure. <coughs> structural aspects of how we award tickets. How do we appoint people? Should they be elected or not elected? All these things need to be gone into because the politics where people come from a state and to Delhi and say the state is with us and come to go back to the state and say Delhi is with us. This is the politics which has hurt us the most. And this is something that must be a priority if you're going to recover from what virtually looks like a wipeout. Well, it's very important for us to recognize what's gone wrong. 
Because if we do not even know what's gone wrong, we'll never be able to correct it. Are critical people in your party making that recognition? Well, everybody is thinking now, reflecting on his own. But, I'm suppo but I suppose in party forums, these issues will come up. Mr. Kamalnath, let's take a break at that point. When I come back, I want to turn and question you about Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi, their role in all of this, and more importantly, their responsibility.